The first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna create a little printed circuit board, not really printed, but we are gonna use this tiny little piece of PCB material. I'm gonna make four tracks in this material using a broken hobby knife. Now this can get kind of tricky, but the reason that I wanna do that instead of splicing these two cables together is because the connectors on these are usually, or not the connectors, the wires in these are usually pretty frail and brittle. So instead of using heat shrink and having something that can break when it bends, I'm gonna use a piece of circuit board material to solder the wires and give it something robust to stick to. And then I'll take heat shrink and put it over this. So this, at this part, I'm gonna fast forward just a smidgen. I might zoom in on this as well. But the first thing that I wanna do is go ahead and create somewhat of four equal channels without cutting a finger off. I am going to use the multimeter and check the continuity across each section to make sure there's no shorts. So that's good news. That is good news. And that is good news. So you can see we have four channels. You, you've got to be careful. That's a pretty thin cut. And once I get into this, I may have to go back and break soldered bridges, but we'll see how it goes when it comes time to solder the pieces in. Let's try out. We don't need all this, but this has a microphone on it. So there should be four wires in here. I'm gonna cut off a generous amount. A little faster this time. No. These are so fragile of wires. Let's see, did that do it? No, there's still a little bit of insulation on the outside of these. But we have to be careful because the wires that are on the inside are extremely fragile. Now we have four wires. We have one that looks sort of blue. We have one that is basically a piece of bare copper right there. And then we have maybe a red and a green. That's my best guess. But what we need to find out now and this is how I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna put them in a specific order, but first what I'm gonna do is take this down. So I'm gonna tape it like this, and we're gonna label each of these wires. So what we're gonna do is scrape just a little bit off of the tips, just like this, Now what we're gonna do is draw us a picture. And that picture is going to be, we have sleeve, ring, ring, tip. Now the way these are numbered is this is tip, this is R number one, R number two and sleeve. 
check your schematics or ohm out your connectors just like I'm doing here to make sure you put them in the right place. That is important. We're gonna connect this to the tip. We're gonna find the tip first. Which one is gonna be the tip? Is it going to be this one? No, that is not the tip. Okay, there's the tip right there. Make sure we do this right. Now we need sleeve next, which is going to be the bare copper one probably. So we're gonna to switch to the sleeve. Make sure we don't have just that one. Okay, sleeve. So we have tip, sleeve, Now, let's see which one's next. Let me make sure we only select ring one. See how I'm scraping that enamel off to get it to beat? That's ring one. Just data in. And then we're looking for PTT, should be R2. Yep, ring two. So that should be the next one. Let's make sure I only have one selected. Deep, deep. Okay, good job. This should be it. Is it? There's a wire in there somewhere that. We have our one half of the Mini Den six pin cable, which I got a mail to mail and cut it in half. So the first thing that we're going to do right now is looking into the mail plug according to the numbering factor that I have found online. I think this is correct as you're looking into it. Data sheets have been kind of hit or miss on this one. But what I'm going to do is carefully roll this under my knife because I don't have any strippers that will strip such large cable or uh, insulation that is. And then I'm gonna take one line and draw it straight across like this. I should, if I cut deep enough, should be able to split that right off and expose the internal wires that are also individually insulated. And inside of this, the wires are really nice. They're easy to work with, easy to strip, easy to tin. So we're going to pull that jacket back. And I must not have made a very deep cut because it does not want to come off of there. So let's go slice again. That should have done at that time. And let's take him do one more roll along here. Maybe press down a little bit harder. Okay, let's see if that did it. Yep, that was it. Okay, so we have the outer foil. And I'm not going to keep the outer foil Let's see how many wires are in here. One, two, three, four, five. 
six wires, and then we have a ground wire. So that ground wire is going to have to connect to something. So that's one ground wire. We're gonna look for the pins that we need, which is gonna be pins one, two, three, and five as we're looking into the connector. So we're gonna use a multimeter set on the continuity, and we're gonna strip just a little bit of each of these wires. Okay, as I do this, I will label them with the color so I'll know which pin is which. So let's start with the copper wire, which should be the sheath. So we'll bring this over. And we're also gonna use some heat shrink. So we come over here to the sheath, that does connect to that. Okay, so that's one thing. Now, what do we think ground is going to be? What color is ground going to be? Is it gonna be this funky gray color? Keep in mind, I'm colorblind, so we need one more tool for this. Gator clip to write, no, it didn't, it didn't grab it. There we go, we've grabbed it. Now, let's see, is that going to be pin number two as we're looking into? Nope, that is not pin number two. That's pin number six. So we're not going to need this one. We are going to trim that one down to a nub. So we'll go ahead and trim that one down. We don't need that one. Okay, which could be ground? What about this orangish color? That's probably green. Okay, I'm guessing that's green. That's got to, wrong, wrong one. That's got to be pin number two. So let's take a look. Nope. That is pin four, and we do not need pin four. So we're gonna cut pin four down to a nub. Not used being careful not to cut any of the other wires that are in there. Okay, well, we're down to four. These are the last four that we're gonna need. What are they gonna be? We have this dark red. This might be green right here. Okay, keep in mind, I'm colorblind, so I don't know what these are, and my wife's not here to help me. That's gotta be pin number two. That is pin number three. So how am I gonna keep these two apart? We're gonna call that, I guess I'm gonna call that light red. I'm gonna guess that's red. Okay, so if you can see what colors these are, we see that three is red. Okay, let's look at, let's look at black. What is black gonna be? No, let's go to this one. I think this one's gonna be green. Please be number two, please be number two. That's it. Okay, so these two are gonna become friends. And what I'm gonna do is wrap these two together.
two left. We have black. Let's see what pin black comes out to be. Let's see. I'm going to guess black is pin one data in. Okay, that was a good guess. Pin one is black. So we have black right there. And then we have yellow. Got to get a good grab on there. Yellow should be pin number five. That's the last one that we need. And that's what it is. So pin five is yellow. So I'm making a cable. If it wasn't made obvious before, I'm making a cable for the digirig. I bought my digirig and it is used on my KX2. So I have the KX2 cables for it. But I know for a fact that you can use the USB to do your CAT control. And then this will control PTT and your audio in and audio out from the back of your radio using the sideband digital. The next thing that I'm going to do is dirty up the board just a little bit with some flux. I hope it hasn't all leaked out. We're going to put some flux on the tip right here, right here, right here, right here. That ought to keep that real stuck together. And then we're going to flux this up right here. And that will have to be cleaned up later. I have flux core solder, but this should make it really stick really quick. At this point, we are going to shorten this for brevity. You don't need to see me solder. I applied flux to the board and to the wires. And the last two wires that I'm soldering in are number five and number one. That's the yellow and the black. Those are your audio transfer pins from the radio to the digirig. You want to make sure that you have them correct because if you don't, your TX and RX audio are going to be backwards and that won't be any fun. After this, we're going to apply hot glue to the small wires to keep, give them a little strain relief because they're the, they're the weakest point in this whole setup, especially the headphone wires. They are just so super delicate. So go ahead and make your connections, make sure they're correct. Test your rig before you move on to the hot glue part and putting on the heat shrink. Because if your rig doesn't work after that, you are going to be in a world of trouble and you have to start all over. And you definitely don't want to start over. And I'm finishing up the job right now. This one gave me a little bit of trouble. It didn't want to stick down even with the flux on it. So these are your connections that you're going to make from your FT891 
and you'll interface it with the digirig. I'm going to put some glue underneath this. set it on top of it and then I'm going to put some glue on the outside make sure that there's some good strain relief that should be ridiculous enough I'm going to put some glue on top of there give that some strain relief Key shrink time. Have you considered becoming a member of the channel yet and show your support in a bigger way? You can like and subscribe, and then you can become a member and help support projects like this. This is what we've made. This is the one part that won't bend very nicely on this. But we went from a digirig to an FT-891. We made it ourselves. Well, I paid, again, tools, all that stuff. Yes, there's, there's gonna be a little bit of that, but this was basically free because the kids didn't like it anymore. I think they actually broke the earbuds. So I used the headphones with the TRRS jack, which goes into the audio, and that provides your PTT and your audio in and audio out, and it goes to the Mini DIN 6 connector, which interfaces to the back of your FT891. We'll unplug the power so I can move this over. So this jack right here you can use for digital. So now, instead of carrying around a signal link, which is a lot bigger and heftier, I can carry around a digirig. You can use this USB port for your cat control if you wanna change frequencies using that, but I mean, still you're gonna have to go into the menu, do the width, it's aggravating, aggravating. So. That's the FT891 Digirig. I bought my Digirig to use with my KX2. I did not want to spend $30 plus shipping for a cable. So I can make two of these. If I could just find another pair of old headphones, I can make two, make one for me, one for a friend, and $5. Heat shrink, practically free. Circuit board, practically free. This, you could you can find these anywhere. You could probably find them in somebody's couch cushion. And the Digirig is the Digirig, but I did not want to pay the $30 plus shipping to get the cable for this, because that's all I needed for the Digirig. So it's one of those things, one is none, two is one. So if my signal link, it, it stays in the the big box, the Apache box, but still I can bring along the Digirig and have a second way to do digital. Alrighty, so there we go. And this is what I made. If you need to pause the screen, these are the settings for the uh, Yaesu FT891. And you are gonna use the hardware handshake. Some of your USB settings may be different, but pause the screen if you need to copy these down. And then this is the sound card. It's called a USB PNP for the Digirig. Over here, we're fussing with the output volume of the mixer in Windows. I hate it, I freaking hate it. I have fussed with this for 20 minutes trying to figure out, you know, in the settings, and I'm also recording this on the computer itself, but in the settings, we want to play our sound through the speakers. We don't want any window stuff to come through the radio. So now you have to go to advanced and go to this one right here, volume mixer. 
Now, I have a problem. This says one, but I know that's not one. But for this, you want it to be your sound card. For the rest of these, like Discord is default, System Sounds is default, this is your default. That way, you don't have anything go through your radio, such as a, an alert or any other Windows sound. Then, when we hit Tune, see, we're trying to get our ALC to register correctly. So right now, the volume for WSJTX is cranked. So you want it to be somewhere in that range, right in the middle, so that you don't overdrive your signal. All right, so now we finally have that part correct. Okay, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna send a test message from my rig. I'm only at 2% power, which is almost nothing. And we're going to send, you can see I've done some other tests, but we're going to send test number one and we're going to send it even first. <laughs> it's overdriving the radio big time. All right, so let's go hush that up for a minute. And it bounced, so that's great.